Hello, I'm Jeffrey Rush. Welcome to Revealing the Times. I apologize for talking low at this time, but there's other people that are asleep right now, and I just wanted to get this out to you guys because um, I know that uh, some of the messages have been long messages, but they are very detailed. Um, I did want to make a shorter message that just gives you the calendars uh, specifically for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, the 70 weeks of Daniel, parts of it, and also um, also uh, the time of uh, Moses uh, after the Exodus uh, when he was coming down with the second set of tablets. Um, but uh, this message is meant to be a little bit shorter, so that way you can kind of see those calendars there. And um, But I encourage you, if you haven't watched the message of... Uh, the uh, solar eclipse, Nineveh, uh, and the book of Amos, uh, as well as the message of uh, solar eclipse, the covenant, and the 70 weeks of Daniel. Both of those messages are uh, worth watching from start to finish. Uh, you'll get a little bit more uh, information as it goes. Everything uh, falls in line with scripture. That's where we stay. Uh, we're not speculating. We're not bringing any kind of conspiracy theory. Um, also, uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm speaking at Bald Knob Cross uh, here in Southern Illinois. Uh, that's where we're at right now um, for the eclipse for April 8th. And uh, we're passing out uh, a bunch of our information to various places, various sites where the uh, sighting will be, where people will be gathering together. Um, but uh, we'll have our table set up there. We'll be doing a message. Uh, I'll be doing a message there. Um, and one of the messages, uh, it is a profound message uh, for the things that are happening uh, around the world at this time. Uh, and it's a message of hope uh, that's happening, of, of everything that's happening in the world at this time. But uh, Wanted to let you know also, uh, if you have not gotten the book, The Revealing, you can get it uh, on our site at revealingthetimes.com. You can also get it from Amazon or uh, on uh, Barnes & Noble or any other uh, online platforms. And uh, it's available in ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Um, but uh, we'll be putting out some other messages. Uh, we will be filming some live messages uh, that we'll do of uh, the viewing of the solar eclipse uh, from Bald Knob Cross. Uh, we will be showing uh, as its total and uh, also the message that I'll be speaking on up there. Uh, that will also be available on our site, on our YouTube channel, at Revealing the Times uh, Revealing the Times with Jeffrey Rush. Uh, so you uh, will be able to watch that. So I encourage you, if you are watching this message, please like, share, and subscribe. Because as you subscribe, you will be notified when we will be showing the sighting uh, at the time of the eclipse, as well as uh, the message uh, that uh, I'll be doing while I'm up there. And we'll even probably include some pictures of the uh, the people that will be there and um, uh, the, the table set up and everything like that. But uh, in the next few days as well, we'll be going to an expo uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be gathered with some various other uh, speakers later next week. But uh, just wanted to let you guys know, uh, keep us in your prayers and uh, keep all of us in your prayers. Uh, pray for this country, pray for those around the world. Uh, and uh, we just thank you for the, for your time being here with us. And we will be getting into our intro uh, uh, trailer, our intro message from Revealing the Times. And we'll be going right into the message. So take care. You God bless.
The title of this message is Solar Eclipse, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Calendars. So as you can see uh, here on this calendar, and from what I shared with you at the beginning of the message uh, about the year 2165 BC, uh, look at the top right corner and you can see where I wrote there, uh, year Abraham was born. Uh, at the time he had the name Abram but it was uh, 2165 BC. On the left side, you see uh, month 12. Now we don't know what month uh, Abraham was born, but we know the year. And what's interesting also with this is when you look down at the end of the month of Adar, uh, look down at the last day, the 29th day on Rosh Kadesh, and again, we see April 8th at the time of the new moon. So the first of Nisan, the first of that month, which the first month uh, back then it was known as the month of Abib. Um, but the first of the first Hebrew month was April 8th going to, into April 9th uh, there once again. And here you probably remember from the last uh, message was uh, this is the time of when God would have made the covenant with, with Abram. We don't know the month that it would have occurred, but in the year 2089 BC, uh, the covenant between God and Abram. And on the month of Adar, you see that at the end of the month, there there is a total solar eclipse, Rosh Kadesh, and it is April 8th, again at the new moon. So the first of the first Hebrew month was April 8th going into April 9th. Once again, uh, I'm, I'm just showing these things to you because in case you didn't see the last message, but, but there's additional things, as you heard in the beginning of this message, there's additional things that show with Abraham and also even with Jacob, and we'll be getting into that in the next few slides. And here is the scripture verse, uh, Genesis 25, 20, uh, the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah. And verse 20 of Genesis 25 reads, Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And um, I encourage you, if you haven't seen the first message, which is uh, uh, solar eclipse, the covenant and the 70 weeks of Daniel, I encourage you to watch that message because you'll get a little bit more in depth of all of the things that were talked about and discussed. But what I want you to pay attention to here is again, this marriage, the covenant between Isaac and Rebecca, and we'll see what happens in the next slide. So in the covenant of marriage between Isaac and Rebecca, this would have happened in the year 2024 BC. Uh, the way we know that is because Isaac was 40 years old as the, ver as the verse uh, told us in the slide before. And uh, if you want to understand more of the timelines, again, watch the message from before the, the uh, solar eclipse uh, covenant and the 70 weeks of Daniel. And it discusses all those timelines in there. Um, but you notice, again, we don't know the month that they were married, but the year, uh, because Isaac was in his 40th year, he was 40 years old, 2024 BC, uh, at the bottom there you see at the end of month 12, uh, you have the 29th day, an annual solar eclipse, and it's April 8th once again. So um, just showing you uh, that. And I'll show you the next scripture verse that follows Genesis 25, verse 20, what the next verse says. So here is uh, where Isaac pleaded for Rebekah. So he's praying for Rebekah. Uh, Genesis chapter 25, verse 21. It says, Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now between Genesis chapter 25, 20 and Genesis 25, 21, there was a 20-year space of time there because uh, Isaac was 40 years old, as it says in Genesis 25, 20, he was 40 years old when he marries Rebecca, but he was 60 years old when, uh, when Jacob and Esau were born. And I'm going to show you something very interesting because as we look at the timeline, as, as was shared in the very beginning, uh, we see what happens in the year 2005 BC. 
So looking here on this calendar, if you look at the top right corner, the uh, year Jacob was born, 2005 BC, that's what I had written there. And uh, on the left side, you see month 12. So this is the month of Adar. And underneath is where it shows a solar eclipse. It's a partial solar eclipse, a total lunar eclipse. But uh, again, we don't know the month that Isaac and, or we don't know the month that Jacob uh, and Esau were born. But again, we know the year. So in the year 2005, when you look down, 2005 BC, uh, at the end of the month, once again, there's this partial eclipse that happens, a sign in the heavens, and it falls again on a, what corresponds to April 8th, 2005 BC. Uh, and then we look over here at the, at the new moon, it's April 8th going into April 9th. So uh, the interesting thing with all of these things, from the time of when Abraham was born, Abram, you know, and then he has the name Abraham. From the time Abraham was born to the time uh, of Isaac marrying Rebekah to the time of the covenant between God God and Abram to the time of, uh, well, let, let's put this in order. <laughs> so the, from the time of, of, of Abraham being born uh, to the time of the covenant between God and Abram to the time of Isaac marrying Rebekah and then at the time of Jacob, the year that Jacob and Esau are born, we see that every single one of them, they all match as far as the months are concerned, where the last of the 12th month, the month of Adar, and, and many of them are marked with that eclipse, and it's falling on April 8th. Uh, you know, we, we, we've always been told, you know, and we, we know that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so these interesting points where when he has uh, come to uh, involve himself with man, you know, between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he also marks those specific years that those things took place, and he marked them with this eclipse that fell on April 8th. You know, so it's, it's just an, an amazing thing to see this, and uh, I'll be showing you what the partial uh, solar eclipse looks like in the next slide. And here you see a partial solar eclipse. Uh, many people uh, that are not in the place of totality of where the total solar eclipse happens on April 8th, many of them uh, will see a partial solar eclipse uh, in various places throughout the United States. But this is a partial solar eclipse. So as you can see here from this calendar, uh, on the top right corner, it says Pentecost, June 2nd, 1445 BC. This is month three, the month of Savan. And when you look down, you see circled uh, the sixth day of Savan. This is Pentecost. And you see there below, uh, it corresponds to June 2nd of 1445 BC. Now, uh, if you heard the message before, the other message, it was letting you know, it was giving you the timelines of when everything took place and how we're able to identify those timelines. And 1445 BC would have been the year that the Exodus took place out of Egypt. Now, uh, this day of Pentecost, this was the day when uh, the the people, you know, they're, they're, they were to prepare themselves for the Lord to speak to them. But then they end up saying to Moses, they say, you go speak, you go speak to the Lord. And so he ends up going up uh, on, on, the, on Mount Sinai and he's up there on the day of Pentecost. He went up and he was there for 40 days, you know, and what we're going to see in the next slide is what is 40 days past, say, June 2nd of 1445 B.C., and it will it, that will have been the time of when Moses would have come down. He would have seen them uh, worshiping a golden calf. He would have broken the tablets. Okay, we'll see uh, what day that would have fallen on, uh, forty days from June second, fourteen forty-five B.C. Now here we uh, have for this current year, because again, with the days between dates, it, it doesn't let you go to BC. So we just want to know how many days are there between June 2nd to 40 days. And that brings us to July 12th. Okay, so this would have been the time 
uh, July 12th of 1445 BC, that would have been the time of when uh, the golden calf, you know, Moses sees them worshiping this golden calf. He breaks the tablets and then he goes back up for another 40 days. So now we'll see what is 40 days from July 12th. Here we see 40 days from July 12th is August 21st. So again, think about that for BC time in 1445 BC, 40 days from July 12th would then be August 21st. This would be roughly about the time of when Moses is now coming down with the new set of tablets, the, the, the laws that would be then put in the Ark of the Covenant. And so now let's look at the calendar and let's see, it did anything happen on August 21st in the year 1445 BC. Here, this calendar, uh, the top uh, right, August 21st, 1445 BC. And you see over here on the left, it says month five, and then it says uh, annual solar eclipse and a total lunar eclipse. And when you go down to the one circled uh, the 28th day of the fifth month, it shows circled in red, August 21st, 1445 BC. So again, this would be sunset to sunset. So from the time of August 21st, sunset, going into what would be August 22nd uh, at sunset. So August 21st, 1445 BC, there is this annual solar eclipse that happens. That's the ring of fire that's around it. And it's, it's interesting because this is the year that they come out of Egypt. And as you've been hearing, uh, the place of the crossing paths, the X marks the spot in southern Illinois in that area, is referred to as Little Egypt. So again, just another thing that all of these things that are, that are put in place, <laughs> this is not... Uh, coincidence. There's just too much. There's too much in order here, and it's not that we're making this stuff fit. It's there, um, you know. And so, uh, as we uh, look at the last couple of slides of of this message, and then I'll leave you with uh, a, a message uh, that I was talking about of with uh, with with Jonah uh, with uh, coming off of the ship into the water and all that stuff. I'll, I'll share that with you. Uh, at the end. So here on the left, we see the book of Ezra. And um, it's interesting that in the beginning of the book of Ezra, it begins in chapter one, where it talks about the decree of Cyrus. Um, and that decree of Cyrus was in, in 538 BC. Uh, but again, that is not the decree that we're looking at when we look at the book of Daniel that was talked about, the, the decree that would go forth to restore and rebuild, okay? Um, now, what we're looking at here on the calendar here to the side, if you look at the top right corner, I've got circled here, decree of Artaxerxes to Ezra. And uh, then on the left, it says month one, okay? This is the, the Hebrew month of of Nisan, okay, the first month of the Hebrew calendar. What we're going to look at is chapter 7 of Ezra, verse 6 through 10, okay? Chapter 7, verse 6 through 10 of Ezra. And it reads, This Ezra came up from Babylon, and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king granted him all his request according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Some of the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, the singers, the gatekeepers, and the Nethanim came up to Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes. And Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. On the first day of the first month, he began his journey from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord 
and to do it, and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. So what we see here, we saw that this was the seventh year of Artaxerxes of his reign, as we said, and in the slide before I had showed you that the, the beginning of the, the reign of Artaxerxes was in the year 465 BC. So this would be in 458 BC, and we're looking at a calendar right now that is showing us the year 458 BC. The scripture I just shared with you, it says that Ezra left, okay, he left Babylon on the first day of the first month. So when we look at this, circled, uh, you see the number one there circled, and when you look down there below, you see April 8th, okay? At that time, it correlated with April 8th, the first of the first month, okay? And notice also, uh, it says in the blue letters, the blue word, it says Tazria. That is that one word that I asked you to write down because that is something we're going to be looking at too in the future. So now I want you to write down 1st of Nisan, April 8th, 458 BC, decree that Ezra was to leave and him and his people and those that we just said that were with him, they end up leaving Babylon and they're going to Jerusalem. Okay. So write down April 8th, 458 BC. Now let us look at the fifth month, which is the month of Av. Here is the fifth month, the month of Av. So this is the Hebrew fifth month, month of Av. And we're going to look again at Ezra chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. Again, it says, On the first day of the first month, he began his journey from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. So when we're looking at this, we're going to look at that uh, right next to it on the calendar here. It's the number one circled, okay, the number one circled. And here we see uh, that it falls on what correlates with August 4th. 458 BC. So now I want you to write down first of Av, A-V, okay, that is the fifth month, August 4th, 458 BC. So his departure was April 8th, 458 BC, the first of Nisan, and then his arrival was August 4th, 458 BC, the first of the fifth month, the month of Av. And something else I want to share with you, too, just here in the book of Ezra, in uh, chapter 9, verse 9, it says, uh, Ezra chapter 9, verse 9, For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage, but he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Persia to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And when it says to revive us, this is to restore us. And remember, the decree was to restore and rebuild. Okay. Uh, what you saw with Ezra is the restoration of the people with uh, what they did with the sacrifice, with their, uh, their looking at the law, re-looking at the law of Moses. And, and Ezra is teaching them, you know, I mean, this is restoration here. And so, um, so we, we have to look at that, you know, if, if all we look at is the building of everything, but we don't look at the restoration of the, of the people, uh, we're, we're missing it. You need to, you, here we need to have both. You have the restoration of the people, and then you also have the rebuilding of things happening also. And it says, when the decree goes forth to restore and build. And what we're going to be looking at here in the next uh, few slides is we're going to now start to bring all this here together. I've had you write down those dates and that like uh, April 8th and August 4th, I had you write those down for a reason because we're going to really come into light with this as we move along to the next slide. 
Now here we have Jesus' crucifixion, Passover, 30 A.D., and destruction of the temple, 70 A.D., okay? Now, before, when I was sharing with you before that there were some historians that had recorded about a three-hour period of darkness, well, that's what we're going to cover here first. On the left side on this slide, it says, date of crucifixion. The year of the crucifixion is confirmed by several historians due to the darkness that occurred from noon until 3 p.m., on Nisan 14, Passover, in 30 AD. It is important to note that the term Passover, it can refer to Nisan 14, the preparation for the Feast of Unleavened Bread, or Nisan 15, the first day of uh, seven for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The historians, uh, Phlegon, Thallus, Africanus, and Tertullian, all mention this three-hour period of darkness that does not have a scientific explanation. It was neither a lunar or solar eclipse for many reasons. One, the eclipse uh, eclipses, they don't last three hours, and they cannot happen during the full moon of Passover. So they, they weren't able to sh explain scientifically how this took place. However, it was like it was like a supernatural darkness that happened. It was it was God that made the earth grow go dark. And it, it, here it was from noon to 3 p.m. at the exact time while Messiah is on the cross. And as, as, as we just saw here, the historians, they recorded that this happened in the year 30 AD. So again, this is why, why I say, as the Gospels tell us that it had been dark during that time, we have to have all the pieces to see and pinpoint exactly when the, everything had taken place uh, as, as it did. Um, now, on the right side, it's, you know, history and headlines. August 4th, 70 AD, Romans destroy the second temple of Jerusalem. Okay, the brief history here. On August 4th, 70 AD, the Romans, they had punished the rebellious Jews by destroying the second temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Okay, in 66 AD, uh, the Jews, they had rebelled against Roman rule, and four years later, the Romans retook Jerusalem. Now, the thing is, all of these things are in the book of Daniel talking about those weeks, right? Those 70 weeks. And it talks about where it says that it says that the decree until Messiah, which is the starting of his ministry or the year of the starting of his ministry, we already discussed that's 26 AD. Three and a half years later from the fall of 26 AD brings us to Passover 30 AD. That's a three and a half year ministry. And then it says, and after those weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So this is Passover, his crucifixion. And then it says the people of the prince who is to come that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That is talking about the destruction of the temple in 30 AD. And, I mean, uh, 70 AD, sorry. The destruction of the temple in 70 AD. Now, so we see here August 4th. And remember, I had you write down certain times and certain dates. You you looked at when did, uh, when did Ezra leave Babylon on the first day of the first month, April 8th. When did he arrive in Jerusalem? The first day of the month of Av, August 4th. Okay, so we're looking at that there too, and we'll see what happens here in the next slide. Here on the left, you see a picture of a garden tomb, and notice there on the side, it's there's this round stone. Now, this was not the garden tomb of the time with, it, this was not the garden tomb that, you know, that Messiah was in that we know of, but this is what the garden tomb would have looked like. It would have looked like this with the round stone that would have covered the doorway of the tomb. Um, on the right side, we see this calendar once again, and we see on the top right corner uh, where I had written there and I circled it, Passover 30 AD, first fruits, April 8th. And you look over here to the left, uh, circled month one. This is again, this is the month of Nisan, okay, the month of Nisan. Now, um, as we look at uh, what is circled, the number 14 here on the calendar, this is Passover. And you see circled there above, it correlates with April 6th, 
30 AD, April 6, 30 AD. Then you look at the other place down below where it is also circled, that is Rashid, first fruits, April 8, 30 AD. Um, remember what I had you write down and the, for the year 538 BC, uh, at the time of the evening offering, the evening sacrifice. Now, even though we may not know that that was at Passover at that time when Daniel's being given this, we still do know that in the year 538 BC, we look at that calendar and we see that in Passover on the which would have been at the evening sacrifice and everything, we see that Passover was on what correlates with April 6th, 538 BC. So we see April 6th, 538 BC, Passover, first fruits, April 8th, 538 BC. Here in the year 30 AD, we see April 6th, 30 AD, Paso uh, uh, first fruits, April 8th, 30 AD. Now, Jesus's resurrection, it was not, the sun had not, S-U-N, the sun had not risen yet, okay? It was not, it was not daylight yet. His resurrection happened during the uh, mid, uh, from between the midnight to the early morning hours, but the sun, S-U-N, had not yet risen yet, so it wasn't daylight, it was still dark out. Um, and so, uh, what we see here, though, is just paying attention. Again, write those down. April 6th, April 8th, okay? And um, also look at this on the right side of the calendar. Um, we're looking at, like, say, day one. Uh, remember, I had you look at Vayikra, right? That's at the very top there of the calendar at the start of that month. And then look down at the bottom. It says Tazria. Tazria on the 29th day down below. Uh, it says Tazria. Okay. Um, and so it's interesting that we're, we're seeing both of those Vayikra, which is, and he called. And then at the very end, which, you know, like we're looking at first and last, right? And this was exactly as it was back then at that time in 30 AD. Um, and uh, so also, it's interesting to note, too, that if we look at this at the start of the first month in 30 AD, uh, it was correlating to March 24th going into March 25th. And down at the bottom of the calendar there, it's April 21st going into April 22nd. And uh, we're able to uh, show uh, more of what that is. Uh, as we as we move on into the slides ahead. So here on the left, we are seeing the destruction of the city and the sanctuary, the temple. Um, remember where Jesus had said to the disciples, not one stone, I tell you, not one stone will be left upon another. Uh, you can see in the picture below on the on the left side, that these are stones that are in Jerusalem, and these are from the time of 70 AD, and they are still there. And, you know, so it's evidence, it's, it's things showing the, the destruction that had taken place and the stones that were fallen down, that they came down from the time of the destruction of the city and the sanctuary in 70 AD. Uh, when we look over here to the right, you see the calendar. This is the fifth month, so this is the month of Av, and circled there, I have where it says destruction of temple, 9th of Av, 70 AD. Um, when you look down below, it's circled the number nine, and this was Tisha B'Av. This is, this is uh, the 9th of Av, and it was on a Sunday. And the destruction of the temple happened there on that Sunday, and you see it correlates with August 4th. Okay, August 4th, 70 AD. So, uh, again, what we saw with the book of Daniel, you saw that there was all the things like, like what we see, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. So not only is it giving you these things of the times of the decree when it goes forth, you look at Ezra, when did he leave? He left on April 8th, uh, the first of the first month. He arrives on the first of the fifth month, which was August 4th in, in the year uh, 458 BC. 
and what we see with the time of Daniel in that year of 538 BC, you see April 6th, April 8th. Uh, you know, if you've been writing things down, as I've been telling you, you're seeing all of those things and they all match. OK, this is going to show you that, again, line upon line and not only are they line upon line, but even the dates themselves when it comes to like month, day and all that, they all match. OK, um, and so this is what we see now when you see like, you know, Messiah shall be cut off, not for himself. That is, you know, uh, April 6th, his resurrection, April 8th and on first fruits. And then you see uh, the, the people of the prince who shall come, uh, who shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, the temple that's destroyed in 70 AD. And that we see here the 9th of Av on Sunday on August 4th. So again, these things, they're not coincidence, they're not chance, but let's go into the next slides and continue on with the message. Now, what you see here on the right is one of our shirts. It's conception, time of life, and that's the image of the time of conception uh, in, the, in the womb. And underneath there, it says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's one of our shirts that we offer on revealingthetimes.com. Here on the left, Genesis chapter 18, verse 10, it says, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And then in verse uh, in Genesis chapter 21, verse 1 and 2, it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And so, you know, people in science, they have, you know, many people have asked that question. When is the time of life? Some have asked, is it the time of conception? Is it the time of the heartbeat? Is it the time, of, you know, and others have tried to say that it's the time of birth. But if we look through the scriptures, God already gives us the answer. He says that he will visit according to the time of life. And then it says that he visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken, and Sarah conceived. So the answer is already there. The time of life is at conception. Okay, and then look down here, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11 through 12. And it says, By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, this is talking about Abraham, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. So uh, I want you to keep in mind too, the seed, right? Um, the parable that Jesus gave of the sowing of the seed he said that the seed is the word, okay? Now, here with the seed of Abraham, the seed of Abraham is the sperm, okay? But I want you to keep in mind here, you are a treasure. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And in God's eyes, you are a treasure. You are, uh, you are worth worthy of him that he, I mean, we, we have all, we have all fallen short of the glory of God, but, but the father sent his only begotten son, you know, and, and he did this because he wanted you to have a relationship with him. He wants to have a relationship with you. So as, as we are a treasure to him, remember what I said in the beginning that we, that silver and gold, I don't have, but we are on a treasure hunt and we are finding treasure. Well, how else do you find treasure when you look at a treasure map? You look at X marks the spot, right? X marks the spot and that's the place of the treasure. Well, here we're going to look at the next thing because again, no man can, uh, can take these eclipses of what happens, you know, above us. No man can can alter or can manipulate a solar eclipse that is done by God. Okay. God's clock in the heavens. 
Okay, so what we're going to see is X marks the spot and we're going to see what that leads us to. Now, what you see here on the top left corner is the eclipses. Once again, uh, you see the one in the northwest going southeast through South Carolina. That's the one from August 21st, 2017. And then you also see down here where it's uh, northwest going southeast through Texas. That was the annual solar eclipse that happened on October 14th, 2023. When you look at the April 8th eclipse, okay, that one is coming down from Mexico and going up northeast. And what you see in Texas, you kind of see an X marks the spot. Well, right there in Texas, that X marks the spot. If you look at the center picture uh, below, it is the empty cross. And this garden, and it, 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 it is there in Texas, and it's right about the place of where the X marks the spot in Texas. Um, and so uh, if I encourage you, if you uh, want to hear more about, there was an interview that was done on with Charisma, uh, and Charisma House, they interviewed uh, the artist and the person that, that had put this garden and everything here together. But this empty cross is about 77.7 feet high. And, um, and then when you look at the one that's going up in southern Illinois, that again, X marks the spot. Well, that is what you see here in the picture on the left and on the right is Ball Knob Cross. Okay, this is up on a high hill, like a high mountain in southern Illinois, and it's been rated as like one of the best places to end up viewing this April 8th solar eclipse in southern Illinois at the very X marks the spot, you know, place for uh, for the, the Tav. Um, now, as we said, the, the letter Tav, it, it means it's the pictograph. The letter Tav is mark, sign and covenant. And what is the treasure? We see the evidence where this place is, this treasure, this X marks the spot. It's over the very thing, the very sign of Tav, because this was one of the other uh, pictographs of the letter Tav is the cross. And it's literally over that at both of these locations, both of these places. And the treasure is, is that we know that God the Father loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son who, who gave himself for us, that whoever may believe in him will have everlasting life. And that is a treasure. And the good news is about this also that, you know, he is not on that cross anymore. It is an empty cross. It's an empty cross. And he was placed in a tomb but what we will see is the good news of that, what happens at the time of the tomb, and we'll see again the promise that was given by God. Uh, and what we'll see is uh, the, the time of his promise uh, that he had given, uh, like even with, with, with Sarah, you know, remember what God said uh, to Abraham. He said, uh, is anything too hard for the Lord? Now picture this. Sarah, her womb, there was no life but death. But because of his word, because, because of his promise, life began, okay? What was impossible became possible because of God, because of his word and promise. And we're going to see something amazing in the next and final slide. And as you can see right here, this is the time of the resurrection of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, his resurrection, April 8th, 30 AD. Uh, and as you know, this upcoming, the solar eclipse, April 8th, 2024. But uh, keep in mind, again, the sign of Jonah, uh, the people back then, they would have known that also this is the time of the eclipse that went over Nineveh, uh, June 15th, 763 BC. And look at what happens at the time of his resurrection. You see a bright light that would be coming from the round stone around the round stone. And it looks like a solar eclipse. 
Um, so here you do have the sign of Jonah. So just as Jonah was three days, three nights in the belly of a fish, so too was the son of man in the heart of the earth, three days, three nights. Um, but, uh, you see the sign of Jonah here. Um, and, uh, stick with us for the last part of the closing message. The longest duration of totality is 4 minutes 28 seconds near Torreon, Mexico. Most places along the center line, the path of totality, will see a totality duration between 3 and a half and 4 minutes. The statue of Jesus on the right in Torreon, Mexico, and it says behind it, Cristo vence, Cristo reina, Cristo impera. In the English translation, it is Christ has overcome, Christ reigns, Christ commands. Amen and amen. Author of The Revealing, Jeffrey Rush, here in New York. Here at the Taiwan Consulate. Revealing the Times, place where you can connect with us. Go to www.revealingthetimes.com to order your copy of The Revealing today, or go to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or any online platform to order your copy of The Revealing, available in ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Is there a mystery waiting to be revealed? From ancient times to current events. Is there more to be discovered concerning Jesus' baptism and his birth? Do the scriptures reveal more concerning the two witnesses than one may expect? Have you been searching, looking for answers? Is there more to Russia and Ukraine? China and Taiwan. Hear what others are saying about the most explosive book of our time. The time is now. The time is set for the revealing. Available now. Scan the QR code to get your copy today. To join the mailing list, go to www.revealingthetimes.com No one knows the day and the hour, only the Father. Though all are meant to keep watch, and from the things that you have seen to the things that you have heard, I am here to ask you these questions. Do you have eyes to see, and do you have ears to hear and understand? You see, these things have been put in order, but not by us, but by God to warn us and let us know of the times. And perhaps you have been born for such a time as this. So search the scriptures. Look at what has been currently happening and has happened in your history. Be the light that you are meant to be. Set your light up on a lampstand so that others may see. For there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Here at Revealing the Times, we are watching. And the question is, are you? If you watch the message, remember to like and share with others, to subscribe with your tablet or smartphone. In the bottom left corner, you can scan the QR code to connect with us. Or on your browser, visit us at revealingthetimes.com. Again, that is revealingthetimes.com. Here at Revealing the Times, we are watching. And the question is, are you?
May God bless you and yours always. And until next time, you take care.